Hello everyone, this is Brock Skaggs. I'm going to make this a short video discussing fixed length arrays inside of VBA. And so if you're not familiar with an array, array is basically a structure uh, that allows me to group together uh, related elements there. And so these could be really anything you want. Um, maybe I'm going to the, the grocery store to go shopping. I could have an array to represent the list of items that I'm going to get at the grocery store. Um, or it could be numeric type. And so I could have a list of ID numbers. Uh, for instance, of uh, students at a university, um, or I could just have a list of I numbers that's related to the first so many odd numbers, if you will. And so some things to think about before you uh, get into an array is what you're trying to store. What is the type of the elements? Are they numbers? Are they going to be integers, longs? Are they going to be doubles? Um, if they're floating points, so on and so forth. Um, also, if they're characters, are they going to be strings? Could be an option. Um, also, how many dimensions do you need? Um, for instance, if I'm just making a list, uh, like I'm going to the store, um, it's probably just a 1D array, and so I just need one dimension. Uh, but I might at times have something where I need multiple dimensions, so um, it almost looks more like a grid pattern. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to multidimensional arrays. Um, also, when I get the array, when I first make it, am I going to know how many elements they're going to be, so it can just be fixed length, or is it going to need to be resizable as the code gets executed there? And in that case, I need some sort of dynamic array, which works a little bit differently. And so, um, let's go ahead and hop right into Excel. We can see a little bit of this. I'm just going to insert a standard code module here. Oops. Ignore, I guess, what you're seeing on the screen at this point. There we go. And we'll say public sub array test one. And so let's look, say I make an array with different types of fish in it. And so I say I'd say dim fish as string. And I put the open close paren after my variable name, and that creates that's saying hey I'm going to create an array. Uh, right now it would be a dynamic array, but instead I'm going to say one to five in here. So I'm explicitly saying. I'm going to create an array. The lowest index is going to be 1. The highest index is going to be 5. And so this array basically has 5 slots for me to put strings, text in there, to describe the different fish I have. So maybe this is the fish that I caught on a fishing trip. And I can say, well, fish sub 1. And so notice here, I'm going to access an individual element of the array. So the first element of the array, we'll say, is a bass. The second element of the array is a catfish. Third element of the array is a bluegill. And what I did here is I forgot the double quote. Fourth element of the array is a what? Bass. I've got catfish. I've got bluegill. I could have crappie in here. Uh, the fifth element of the array is going to be a carp. And so there's just five types of fish. And so one thing you can do to test to see if our array got populated correctly, so I'll just put a break point at the bottom of the subroutine, hitting F5 while in the subroutine, I'll just evaluate. And so now down here in my watch, right click and add a watch. And I can type in the variable name for the array, fish. And now inside of that I can see fish control contains five different elements, one to five for the subscripts, and I've got the names of the fish that I caught as the values. And so that's looking pretty good. Another thing I could do is I use a for loop to iterate through it. And so I might say dim i as integer. And then I could run a for loop. So for i equals 1 to 5. Next by. And each one of these I can say debug.print fish of i. And what that'll allow me to do is print out the names of each of the fish. And so now if I hit F5 and run it, notice in the immediate window it went through and printed all the different types of fish that I had there. Say so I don't really need that, but I want to know like the third fish that I caught. And so I'll just comment that those rows out right now and I might say debug.print third fish. And now I'm just going to access an individual element in the array. And so clear out the immediate window, hit F5. And so now it's printing out the string, third fish got the and side for string concatenation, and then it's going to reference the third element in the fish array, which happens to be bluegill in this case. And so this is one way to um, do it. Um, another way, as far as to illustrate a 
different function that you might find handy is if I go back up here into my for loop, we'll kind of revisit this one. Uh, notice here I've hard coded in the, the five here and that's the highest index. Well, what if I didn't remember what that was? Well, I could use u bound, which is an array function, pass in the array, and it should do the exact same thing for me. u bound is a function that returns the highest subscript for a given dimension in an array. Here it's the 1D array, so um, I just have five coming out of u bound. You can see I'm just hovering over it and it's showing that it's executing to five in this case. Uh, very similar, there's an l bound to get the, the smallest index there. And so notice here again, to create the array, I said dim, I've got the array name from a variable name, in this case fish, open paren, 1 to 5 was stating the lowest index, the highest index, and then as string, or strings telling me the type of elements that I'm going to be storing. There is a slightly different way to do it. Uh, if I come over here to my PowerPoint, uh, you can just specify the last index. And so here I've got dim, cat, america, team, and notice I don't have zero to six or one to six, I just have the six in here and that's basically specifying the last index. I notice by default VBA is going to assume that you're starting at zero so there's actually going to be seven elements in this array. Um, you can't have it default to one but you have to put this option base one up here in the declarations section of your module or your declaration section is at the top here outside of any public or sum it'd be right here I could hit enter and put that options base one if I wanted everything to default to one in terms of the array subscripts there. And so that's nice, it's all um, 1D arrays, but what if you had multiple D, multiple dimensions in your array? And so I guess an example of this, um, basically we did something like this, where say all these cells that are boxed in, that would be a 1D array, right? And we had something like bass, crappie, trout, um, catfish, perch, so on and so forth, and we just have a list here. Well, you can also have a 2D array, where we'd be going this way as well. And so, say all those are all boxed in, that could be a representation of a, a 2D array, where I've got kind of rows and columns, if you will. Um, you can keep going in your dimensions, really. You can go to a 3D array, so now it's row, column, and then think of something coming out of the screen. It has some height to it, kind of looks like a cube. And then even a 4D array, think of every element in that cube now changing as a function of time. And so, when you start increasing these dimensions, now all of a sudden you have multiple subscripts, right? Just to reference an individual element in that structure, you've got to have a subscript for each dimension in the structure. And so, rarely do I get past two. I think one time I've gotten to three uh, dimensions there. Um, usually if I'm getting that far into things, I'll end up building my own class or object to, to store in multiple things together. Uh, just to give you a taste of what these things look like for a fixed length array, um, I'll come down here and let's write a subroutine to calculate Fibonacci numbers. And so, there's another subroutine here inside of the same, same um, code module. And so, if you're not familiar with Fibonacci numbers, um, basically what I want to do is create a two-dimensional array. In my first column, if you will, I just want a counter. And so I'm just going to have one, two, three, so on and so forth. Let's say down to 15. And then the second column, I'm going to have the Fibonacci numbers. And so Fibonacci starts at zero, then it goes one, one, and then on the fourth element, the pattern starts where we're saying, okay, this number is always going to be equal to the sum of the previous two numbers. So in this case, equals one plus one, so that should be two. And you just run this down to calculate the subsequent Fibonacci numbers. And so instead of storing these in cells on my spreadsheet, I'm going to be storing these in a two-dimensional array. And so in this case, if I tried to mimic this exact thing in an array, I need one dimension to run from 1 to 15, and then I need the second dimension to run from 1 to 2, if I want to start with my subscript at 1. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. And so let's create a variable, dim fibnums, as my array variable. Open paren, I'm going to say 1 to 15, and then comma 1 to 2 and we'll store these all as longs. And so this creates a fixed length two-dimensional array. The array name is fibnums. The first dimension goes from one to 15. The second dimension goes from one to two. And we're going to use a for loop. I need a counter variable i. And I'll say for i equals one to 15 next i. And we'll populate this array using the for loop. And so with this, the first column, if you will, is going to be easy. 
because it's just going to be the count, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. And so I'll say something in here. Each time through the iteration, I want to go fib nums i comma one is going to be equal to i, and so that just is going to have the count. Uh, for the second one, i comma two, I've got to make a decision, right? Because depending if it's the first, second, or third element, I've got special rules for those. And so I'll say something low. If i happens to be one, then we'll do something. If i equals two or i equals three, then we'll do something else. If it's not one, two, or three, then we'll have a third condition here. And so the pattern was the first time through, I need to store zero. For the second and third times through, those need to be one. And then for all subsequent iterations, we add the previous two. And so to add the previous two, we say, well, that's going to be i minus one comma two plus fibnums i minus two comma two. That should give us to add the previous two. Um, at this point, we should be good printing things off, so um, I'll just eliminate my items in the immediate window, and I'll get my debug.print, open frame, string concatenation add, get known sub i1, that'll be the first element, have a comma there in a space, get known i comma 2. There we go, ampersand, and see there. And this the uh, parenthesis, I think, at the end here. Just open. Oh, got the ampersand. There we go. And so what this should do is should populate the array and also print things out as we go. That's all. I'll go ahead and put a breakpoint there. Hit one. And what do we have? And uh, else if oh here we go forgot the else if here now we should be good there we go and so what do we have the first column here the first index is one through fifteen then the second index goes zero one 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 plus one is two one plus two is three two plus three is five three plus five is eight eight plus five is thirteen thirteen twenty one is thirty four and so on and so forth there so it looks pretty good. Um, just to give you a sense of what this looks like in the watch, I'll go ahead and come over here, break that out, and add to my watch uh, the fibnums right here. And so it's saying, hey, I've got a multidimensional array of type long that I'm storing, 1 to 15, 1 to 2, and then each one of these elements has the essentially row that we were looking at in Excel. So it has the two index elements inside of each one of these items. And so that is a very quick example of a multidimensional fixed length array inside of VBA. And so I think we're about done. Um, we talked about that. That's basically what we did, except for we went to 20, 15 instead of 20. And then I also talked about these U-bound and L-bound a little bit there as well. It's just common array functions to uh, get the upper bound and lower bound as far as the highest and lowest subscripts in that given dimension. And so thank you for watching the video. Um, there's a, a little bit of a reference that I've been using as I've prepared my materials. Um, hopefully this helps you out with fixed length arrays inside of VBA.